sorry for the fans that are in my corner that don't want to hear me talk like this. They really ride in his dick. <laughs> the dick riding that Sports Center does, that's pretty much what they are. Eating too many mushrooms out here. More Shout basketball. KD was back. KD was back last night. He went 5 for 5 with 17 points. I don't know how many minutes he had. Harden is still out. The Nets are looking good, except... I have something to say about Blake Griffin. Sports Center is really trying real hard to make it seem like Blake Griffin is the old Blake Griffin. I watched him jump and slam one in with the aggressiveness, but he was mm-hmm. about a foot further down on the rim than he used to get. What do you expect? He's, I know, I know expect? this. I just I don't like how they're like, oh, vintage, vintage Blake. I'm like, no, not vintage Blake. Blake used to well, jump I mean, over cars. Just like- <laughs> That's just like when Vince Carter dunks now. They're like, oh, a throwback to young Vince. It's like, it's just a little tip of the hat. We all know you ain't really getting up like that anymore. But it's just like, we remember. We remember. It was just a thing I noticed. I I don't like how, uh, sorry for the fans that are in my corner that don't want to hear me talk like this. They really ride in his dick, right? Like the dick riding that Sports Center does, that's pretty much what they are. It like... I think Kirk Herbstreet is just writing all their material. Like, I think he's their social media the guy. I hate Kirk It's just Herbstreet. Kirk Herbstreet. So Al Bramble in the eye test. They're just passing everything. <laughs> oh, Nick Saban. Chill the fuck out. Yeah. Um, that was mad sus. I apologize to the fans fine. in my corner who were like, why are you so wild? Like, this is who I am. This is what, this is what we are. Uh, I touched the, I touched the uh, microphone. I wear Again. t-shirts, and I rock gold chains, baby. So fuck y'all if you don't like it. Your setup is better, though. Um, well, yeah, we got some money now. <laughs> Draymond Green, uh, we talked about him and saying he's the best defensive player ever. Well, the truth is hmm. anybody who's lined up against Draymond Green is actually the best player ever because you don't even have to guard him. Sports Center. Uh, Mm -hmm. decided they were going to clown on Draymond Green by posting a compilation of people not guarding him at all and Draymond not shooting the ball. He is not greenlit. He is a good passer, but he's just sitting there like, where's Steph? (laughs) I can't can't explain to you how much joy it brings me to see SportsCenter finally turn on Draymond. I've been going so many years of people talking about Draymond's a great defender. Draymond's a great uh, hustle player. Draymond's a great playmaker. I'm glad that the tides have shifted. And now we are sitting and going, oh, people don't even guard Draymond because he's so trash on offense. He wasn't good on offense. He wasn't good at making plays, at passing the ball. He just had Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, and Kevin Durant. I could close my eyes and throw that bitch somewhere and I'm going to get an assist. Like, fuck you, Draymond. You all will now see that he ain't it. He's not that guy. He's not a good defender. He's not a good offensive player, and he's not smart. I don't know that he can read. Thank you, Sports Center. Uh, Appreciate you. I wonder, so Rapino of the women's uh, team is pretty pissed off at him for his comments about women need to stop crying and basically take action to get paid more, um, which... I'm split in this argument. I don't want to tell you to quit crying to get paid more, but at the same time, you just heard my spiel, Candace Parker. You have to be realistic about the fact this is an entertainment industry. And if you're not playing the game at a level of entertainment that's already offered out there in the facet, you have to maybe find what your lane or your avenue may be and be happy with that. Well, when it comes to the women's soccer team in particular, I've had this discussion with people. It's it's not the fact that they aren't as good as the men, right? Because we know for 100% sure that the women's soccer team in the U.S. at the game of soccer, at playing, if they were to play against each other, would not be as good. However, comma, women against women, the U.S. women's soccer team is the best on the planet, right? And I love watching them play. Yeah. Well, but women's soccer when you talk about them. is only watched this heavily by the United States. One time of the year. 
Like, I watch women's soccer when I catch it, right? Because there's a lot of Stanford players on the women's soccer team. And I, you know, Zach Ertz's wife is on there. I, I'm a huge fan. I try to give them as much love and support as I can, right? Rapino, I'm not a huge fan of her just because I think she's she's misguided with her opinions most of the time. Um, well, I feel like she's just here for outcry. No matter, She just looks for what that may be. Not only that, but I remember her taking a, you know, sitting on the sitting on the back step of everything uh, while Abby Wambach and um, Hope Solo were the stars of the team. Uh, yeah, I said yeah. it, Rapino, you weren't as good as they were. And I know that you are the main person now, but let's not forget that my girl, Katarina Macario, is probably a better soccer player than you and will overshadow you quite quickly. So... Um, I will... I would like to say That's when tangent. it comes to the women's soccer team, they kind of have a point when we talk about in entertainment industry, this being about revenue, income, money, dollar bills, green, 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 greenbacks. They actually pull in, I think, more viewership than the men's U.S. soccer team. So they have a place to make that argument about the revenue not being proportionate to that. But when we bring it back to the, the game of basketball, like if you want to go to the WNBA, they lose more revenue than they produce, and then the NBA teams have to carry them. So you can't you can't make that argument there. And NCAA basketball, same thing. A little different though there because NCAA as a whole is making boatloads of money off extorting these young men and women. So you could argue a little bit more about definitely the gym fiasco. Fuck y'all, that's rude. Yeah, that's like a different sure. thing. But as far as being upset about viewership and then the overall cultural viewpoint, you have to accept that. You're not fulfilling the entertainment source the same as the men's team is. Women, like I said, back to women's soccer, you definitely are. So there's a, a different argument to be had there. But the men's, the the men's soccer, right? Men's soccer as a whole is pulling in more revenue. Oh, yeah. So they're they're dispersing that revenue from that pot. That's the thing. Is well, like yeah, that if you go if you lay that parameter, then it's different. Should the should the women's the U.S. women's team should be the highest paid women's team out there, and the yes. U.S. men's team should be the lowest paid one of the lowest paid men's teams out there, right? Proportionally yeah, due to what they do, right? Yeah, if we're keeping with that. But the pot itself, they're two separate pots. I'm sorry. Not same same. They're not. So. This this is something that we have to we have to address because you need to get the branding out there. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to find a way to address this other than performance and skill. You're going to have to find a way to address the fact that the reason why women don't get paid as much is because they are not watched globally as much, right? Because all these big sports are global sports. Because last time I heard. Uh, Serena Williams ain't she ain't doing too bad. I don't hear Serena saying that she don't get paid enough. That's what I mean. And she's in a sport to where people want to watch her play. It all comes down to do people want to pay to watch you do what you do? And you can't get you can't glorify women's basketball for not getting paid enough when people don't want to watch what they do, and then tell people like professional jiu-jitsu guys they were like we're not getting paid enough we do something that's really hard too and it's like well, people don't want to watch you so they're not also, going to pay there's that's a all purse. it comes down to is money there's a purse for serena williams if she gets first she gets the purse yeah, right it's like golf the paycheck baby right tiger woods made a lot of money from playing golf but he made a lot more from nike Right, so that yeah, that tends to be the eh? the main thing that you get paid off of, right? Let's let's not act like if Rapino had her own shoe, Nike Nike soccer shoe, like Leona Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo and those type of people, mm -hmm. that she wouldn't be pulling Money's in coming. that money, right? My well, thought too is like maybe if because if we're gonna if I'm gonna say this, I think of women's soccer they took a hard L to like a men's high school team. Like the quality of playing the game at this base level is just not the same. And we can have that conversation a different day. So maybe find a new avenue, a new lane, a new facet. So if but, pure 
talent isn't what's going to bring you the revenue. Maybe fan interaction or like, you know, be, be the league that's very interactive with the fans, the fan experience, like something that's going to bring you in. And well, give you, you have to interest. remember that we're, we're just like getting away from this idea. Like, for instance, women's boxing had a big issue because women's boxing, they wanted to basically have, they wanted bikini boxing, right? They, yeah, fuck that. Right? They wanted to put hot girls in the ring and skimping clothes and have them beat the shit out of each other, right? And that's how they got revenue from women, right? Was well, basically, basically the sex what appeal. And I understand that. Zan did for the UFC. Right. It's, it's really hard to get it from women being objectified for how they look and be recognized for their talents, which is what we really need to figure out how to do with women's sports is to, to generate revenue based off of what they have, like what they offer, what they do, right? It's, it's really hard to do that in, because it's an entertainment industry. Right. Yeah. And I feel like this is where I want to double back to the comments about Candace Parker. I'm referring to Shaq suggesting that they lower the foot or the hoop to nine feet and Candace Parker getting very like upset and having kickback. But in my mind, if you lower the hoop to nine feet in a women's game, that adds to the entertainment value. Because for me personally, as someone that hoops and someone that likes combat sports, I look at women's fighting, women's boxing. And I like it. Some of my favorite fighters are women. Like, I enjoy women's fighting. I like watching them fight. I don't like it from a sexy put on your fucking thong and fight. Like, I like it as, like, these are grown-ass women, grown-ass adults, and stepping in a cage, displaying good technique and skill. Right. Now, as far as basketball, I watch, like, the WNBA, and the there's physical, biological hiccups. I don't want to call them hiccups. Like, there's differences. Limitations. They're, there's limitations. They're not going to jump as high. They're not going to explode as hard. Da 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 da. So why don't they're not as tall? Why don't we drop? They're not as tall. Why don't we drop the hoop to nine feet and give more of like that aspect ratio? You know what I mean? Like just like Stanford. Stanford won the national championship because the team couldn't make a point blank layup and they couldn't even jump high enough to touch the net while shooting it. And Stanford had two tall forwards. They have some tall girls on their team. Yeah, and they're just standing there beside her making no contact. The old girl just biffs layups. And it's yep. like, that isn't entertainment value. You bring that hoop down to nine feet, and there's a little more of like a correlation there between the height and stature differential. That right. might bridge some of that entertainment gap. And that, and, and that's just basketball. But like when I, when I look at soccer, like what, you can't make the field smaller. You can't make the goal bigger. Um you know, you can't no. put rockets on their shoes and make them faster. You know, it, it's a technical game, and that and that's kind of the hard part is that there's a level of athleticism required to be overall throughout the yes. throughout humankind good at soccer, right? But comparatively, the women's team is damn good at soccer, and I don't know how you make it more entertaining because what the reason why people liked hope solo is because she was attractive and she was open about having a lot of sexual relations in at the olympic games and abby wambach was only popular among soccer fans because she was kind of a dipshit in that name before um so like i said you you have to find a way to make it entertaining for people to watch and I, or, or to brand yourself. And that, and that's the thing too, is that it's really hard. You know, how many, how many NBA basketball players have their own shoe? Like not that many. It's a small ratio. It's a small ratio, but there's a ton of men's basketball players with shoes, right? Like, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of them that have their own shoes. It's a small proportionate amount. Right. But I, there is not any, there's like no women's, specific shoe like there's no britney griner nike nike griners is there is that does that exist they, do they have that? that's existed that's existed before in like smaller brand names and like mainly overseas like china yeah. and stuff but it doesn't pull the revenue so it doesn't sustain and that and my kind of point about changing like what you said earlier about the technical aspect of like women's saga i think we can all appreciate the technical aspect so if we can bridge the gap between the physicality difference like let's accentuate the technicality 
like with boxing and fighting, it's like you have to really accentuate the technique when two women are in there fighting. Women's soccer, women's basketball, let's bridge those physical differences, like i.e. maybe lowering the rim, etc., and accentuate the technical skills that they do have. They have they must possess to play this game at this level. We're not even gonna we're not gonna go there and say that, but if we can remove some of the physicality differences to like the viewer's naked eye, the yeah. person who's paying the revenue and driving the entertainment industry, then, you know, we can put the light on the technique and maybe we can get somewhere. Yeah, this is a very interesting conversation to have. I think that we're going to touch on this uh, another time as well, because I, I, yeah, I, I want to I want to continue to brainstorm this idea I, like that. That's going to be my project this week. Try to think of ways to make women's soccer as entertaining as men's soccer. Uh, that's going to be, I'm going to try to think of that. Uh, and, I, and we're going to, I'm going to have that ready the next show. Don't let me forget. Um, gotcha. Let's get into caught him slipping. The Husky boys favorite mm-hmm. section of the show. Who do you, who did you catch a uh, slip in this week? I already know cause I have notes, but go ahead. Oh, well, I'm sure we've all seen it by now. Mr. Paul Pierce, AK doo over defense. You're fired. Yeah. You got fired. My friend, Paul Pierce out here. As we all know, ESPN analyst for some years now. Trash. Has a sweet gig, reoccurring gig, always on ESPN, talking basketball, hating on LeBron, talking shit, and sucking up to Doc Rivers. However, I don't know what's happening, but Mr. Pierce decided he needed to hop on the Instagram live with not one, and not two, but three plus strippers. I'm talking thoroughbred strippers out here. <laughs> twerking, thongs, smoking cigars, or drinking. And it was just wild because he chose to get on live and show this. Right. I don't know if he did this on purpose. And if he did, that's the greatest resonation letter I've seen next to maybe my own that I dropped a few months ago. That one's pretty good, too. Check that out. But you had to do this on purpose, right? You don't just accidentally do this, and especially when you only had like 350 viewers of the live when he's right. like, not that many people were watching. You know you're going to get fired. Clearly, you're going. It's ESPN. This is a Disney brand. You're getting fucking fired. So, I almost don't know if I want to call it a caught him slipping because I feel like he got them slipping in a way because he's like, I'm gonna get fired. I want. I don't know what he's cooking up on the side, but I hope he's not that dumb. But maybe he is. I don't know. Maybe I Could have no be. idea. I I I didn't read that much into it. Um, I'm just interested to see what he does next because I didn't think he was too good of an analyst. I didn't think he was that great. Well, he wasn't a great analyst. I wonder if maybe like the the writing was on the wall and he wanted to go out with some like pizzazz, catch a little highlight on the out the door. Maybe I did see someone offered him a quarter million dollar deal from like an adult entertainment site to come like host some joints on there. So, well, man's got options. Don't feel too bad for him. Shout um, out to the truth. Let's. Oh, we're gonna go into the over under. I saw that you have Paul Pierce's the uh, his NBA career mm-hmm. as uh, only fitting that we touch on that. I have to try to say whether it's overrated or underrated. I think at this point, I, it's amazing to me that he's been forgotten as much as he has as far as what he did on the basketball court. But I actually think he's an under. I think he was underrated as a basketball player. I I'm think, glad. I'm glad to hear you say that. I think Paul Pierce was an exceptional basketball player. I think he was on good teams. He had a good career. Um, he stayed in he the league Doc too Rivers long. In his prime. I think he stayed in the league too long. Oh, definitely. I think he overstayed his welcome, which is common, you know, chasing a ship, uh, especially after you've had a few. So, um, I. He made his name off hating on LeBron and you know he got he got a few over on him in the early days it's good for you yeah I like I said I I'm not a huge fan of the guy I don't I don't think he's that great at a at his personal life as far as I don't think he's you know was a great analyst or anything like that um and I think he was kind of annoying I wasn't a huge Paul Pierce fan but I respected the game I definitely uh it's hard to be a Paul I wouldn't say I was a Paul Pierce fan as a kid being like following the Cavs and everything and how he'd always trump the Cavs in the playoffs. But I always grew up with a lot of respect for the way he played the game. Mm-hmm. I've definitely stolen some moves out the bag on the rec court myself. Some of them little post fades, up and unders. They're not all coming from Mr. Carmelo. Some come from Paul. 
So I'll give him his credit. I agree. Definitely an underrated player as far as his NBA career is concerned. But he played in an era with a lot of greats, so, I mean, that'll happen. But let's not forget how good he was on the court just because he's a terrible analyst. For sure. Um, Who we got next? Next on the list, we have the, you know, the staple of the pandemic season, what is the OnlyFans page. OnlyFans. Think about what it did for people during this pandy, all the entrepreneurs that blew up. Shout out to... Where the fuck that dumbass girl is made a million dollars in six hours. Danny uh, Tyga, Safari, everybody out here dropping um, them things online. But OnlyFans, overrated, underrated? Mm-hmm. I don't Take know because I don't partake. So Like and subscribe. I don't partake. But I would say that it's probably over I would, I'd say overrated in a lot of ways because from what I understand about OnlyFans um, from what I've heard from you is that it's mm-hmm. a uh, it's not necessarily a good way to do this I, I wouldn't say that it's, it's the best way to put your content out there, seeing as it requires so much fan interaction, yet fan er- interaction is what is getting some people paid. Um, mm-hmm. And it, that's that's kind of the thing about it. it like, a, I, I think that it's it's a glorified subscription for pornography is, uh, is all it is. Is oh, that yeah. it's an oh, it, like... Isn't it expensive, bro? Like, isn't it like kind of well, pricey? I'll give you, I'll give you the breakdown because I have. I went down the only fans. I thought about doing a podcast that was going to be possibly too much for YouTube. My original take on the Not Your Baby Daddy podcast was to be, we're going to interview young ladies with only fans with premium snaps, kind of get their opinions, their feels, and just talk about things that I knew wouldn't fly on YouTube. So I created an only fans, had that going. I definitely dabbled. Like I went in there and like checked in on like people I knew like in real life that had started OnlyFans. I'm like, this is worth like six dollars just to like do my research, see what's popping off. Cause I was potentially going to reach out and like interview a lot of these people. So I kind of need to know like what's happening on your page. So I went down the rabbit hole. It's a it's an interesting platform. I could see highs and lows with it. It's definitely giving people an avenue to make money that they couldn't make before mainly in like the sexually explicit realm, like pornography. But for the most part, it seems like the vast majority aren't doing anything too hardcore. It's just like, like, uh, it's like a playboy shoot almost at best, like a risque Instagram post. I don't, I don't necessarily want it to go away for the purposes that I think that it makes the, because you're never going to get away from prostitution, which I think is the worst section of the business, right? I think that women are primarily exploited in that avenue, and I think that um, if Ooh, if this, this is... kind of gives them an empowering role in that. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think this gives women an ability to, to make their own rules in that sense. Um, but I, it's not without exploitation, and I think... I think that's oh, that's definitely. I think that's what could be done better. I mean, it's I think it's just this uh this is the the new version of what's been done before. Um you know. Yeah. I do think it's like it's a interesting avenue to think about. You kind of empowering people up with a platform to put whatever they want on the internet within reason. Yeah. For sure. It, everything's kind of locked down. Twitter's locking down. Instagram's locking down. Facebook is like more prude than a Catholic school in like the 1980s. Everything is like, like we're suppressing like what some people consider taboo or explicit material. Like the people still need to express themselves with these avenues and these right. lights. So it kind of gives you like a place to do that to where you don't need a lot of the overhead that you might have. Like you couldn't just start shooting like porn or anything like that. You'd have to go to like some sleazy manager, some sleazy this guy, this meet with these people. It was like a whole fucked up process. And, and that is Bodie. 
he is top flight security we're, around here, and they're vacuuming who, the hallway. Who don't know? We're going to uh, we're going to start an OnlyFans podcast. It's uh, going to be called Left Nuts Are Free, and uh, we're mm. just going to do this same podcast but naked. Uh, oh, I'm just that's kidding. fun. <laughs> no one told me that. I would have went easy on the bread this weekend. <laughs> uh, but no, let's keep it rolling though. Uh, lastly, on the list, speaking of carbs. Krispy Kreme coming out with two new iterations of uh, Oreo glaze. One's an Oreo glaze and one's Oreo glaze. I thought with you like were talking Oreo about the wrapper. F- I saw no, it in the notes. That, I thought you were talking about the wrapper. No, I'm talking about them donuts. I thought you killer. were hanging out with Cardiac your little brother killers. and your little brother liked the wrapper. Man, that's where I thought this was going. You're talking about uh, no. the actual donuts. About Krispy Kreme, the, them donies. Krispy Kreme donuts are a- underrated at this point. They were the shit. The- they still they put are. an Oreo filling inside of them. That sounds, Oreo glaze. that sounds like too much. I just like the traditional. I need that in my life. Uh, I think yeah. I think Krispy Kreme at this juncture is underrated. I think uh, it, Krispy Kreme was a staple there for a minute. Dunkin' Donuts, I mean, for some reason, became what everyone does now. But There's a lot of, like, when we were still in the Air Force, there's a lot of those early morning meetings where they're like, oh, everyone report. At fucking nine o'clock on a Saturday, because somebody got in a fight or somebody got a DUI. Da da da. And it's like, if there's not Krispy Kreme donuts here, I'm getting kicked out of the military today. Exactly. So shout out to you, Krispy Kreme. 